It's time for Ask the Tech Guy. Uh, great question from Thomas about compression. What's the difference between lossy and lossless compression? Next on Ask the Tech Guy. This is Twit. Ask the Tech Guy is brought to you by LastPass, the number one most preferred password manager. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. Thomas writes, a long time ago, I thought I heard you say, if we make a copy of our files, the copy is, is not as good as the original. Just like when you make a copy of a cassette tape. The first might have been listenable, but a copy of a copy of a copy would sound pretty bad. I mentioned this to a coworker. He said, that doesn't make sense. Computer fires are digital. A copy of a bit is as good as the original. Then a few years ago, I was reading web pages about JPEG versus ping files. If I understood them correctly, each successive copy of a JPEG will be lower quality. But no matter how many generations of a copy of a ping file, each is identical to the original. This concerns me because I made copies of my files from the hard drive of each computer, then copied them to the hard drive of the next computer. Are my files going downhill? Thomas, you've come across a very interesting phenomenon. And it also has to do with the difference between copying and transcoding. So your friend is absolutely right. When you're copying a file, that is copying it from one place on a hard drive to another or from one hard drive to another, you're making, in theory, a perfect bit-for-bit -bit copy of that original file. That is always the case. So those files that you've been taking along with you from computer to computer to computer, barring any file degradation or errors in the copy process, and believe me, those things happen, those should be exact identical copies. There's no intentional loss there at all. That's what we call a lossless copy. But it is the case that if you use file compression software on an already compressed file, it'll degrade the quality of it, much like your cassette recording of a cassette, a cassette. So cassette recordings are lossy, Digital copies are loss-less. Now, JPEG is a lossy compression technology. It means in order, and we talked about this a couple of episodes ago with music, with MP3 music, same idea. In order to make a smaller copy of an original image, JPEG takes out things that you won't see unless you're really looking closely. That's lossy compression, and it is the most extreme form of compression. It can really get file sizes down. But the problem with lossy compression is if you do it twice, it's going to start to look worse and worse. But you're not doing that. Remember, you have a JPEG. You've already compressed it. You're not recompressing it. You're copying it digitally. When you move it to another drive or you copy it to another drive, you're not recompressing it. You're just merely making it a perfect digital copy. So nothing to worry there. I wouldn't recommend, however, if you've got a bunch of JPEGs on your hard drive, running it through a program that recompresses it. That's going to reduce the quality. Pings, uh, which are in most cases lossless compression, they're compressed, but they don't lose any data. You can recompress a ping. As long as you don't turn a ping into a JPEG, you probably shouldn't lose any quality. But there's no point in recompressing it. You're not going to make it any smaller. So... That's the key here is understanding the difference between recompressing or transcoding and direct copying. Incidentally, if you want to be a little bit more careful about copying those files, a good copy program and Microsoft's DOS copy or the copy that you use when you drag and drop in Windows is actually not a very good copy tool. That's why most versions of Windows offer a better form of copy, a command line utility called RoboCopy, short for not robot but robust. RoboCopy does integrity checking. It actually says, all right, this was the original this is the copy. Are they identical? And it'll keep doing it until it gets an identical copy. Uh, there are a lot of tools that do that. They're a little bit better than the DOS file copy, which for reasons of speed, copying on Windows or DOS, dragging from one uh, drive to another, it's just blasted on there. And if there's some bits lost, well, there's some bits lost. So you do occasionally get file corruption in there that way. It could also be a bad hard drive. There's other reasons that could happen. But in theory, a digital copy is perfect. I'm glad you asked because that's a confusing question. And I hope I made that a little bit clearer. There are the perfect copies of digital copying. They never degrade. In theory, if you don't have any 
data loss due to a bad cable or a bad hard drive. It should be identical. You can make one copy or a million copies. Each one should be absolutely identical. Those are clones of one another. And most of the time, even if you're you know, copying lossy files, they'll be exactly the same. It's only if you recompress them that you're making them worse. If you take a JPEG and use a JPEG compression tool and recompress it, you'll make it worse. That's why you probably, when you're editing files, don't want to export as a compressed file format after the edit. You want to save it in the original format. I hope that helps. Uh, appreciate the question. And thank you for listening to the show. Don't forget you can subscribe in your favorite podcast application or download episodes. We're on YouTube. Just subscribe right down there or download them from our website, twit.tv slash a TG. We plan to do a new episode every week. Uh, we also encourage you to ask your own questions. Just email askthetechguy at twit.tv. Ask the Tech Guy is brought to you, as always, by LastPass. Just remember your master password, and LastPass will remember the rest. LastPass has new features in their business lineup. LastPass Enterprise now has single sign-on technology, and they've already got 1,200-plus apps. LastPass MFA goes beyond standard two-factor authentication by using biometrics and additional factors like geolocation. Combine the two, you've got LastPass Identity. Find out more at lastpass.com slash twit. LastPass.com slash twit. Stumped on a nasty tech conundrum? Email ask the tech guy at twit.tv.